And they kept, why did you say that? I don't know. I'm not denying that I said it. I just don't know why I would say it. The word is not even a word I use. I don't even use the word aborigine. I'm not sure where it came from. It came from, nigga, you know who the niggas are in the United States. You know they're the aborigines that people say were imported from Africa. And it slipped out for whatever reason. And it's gonna, people are going to keep saying, oh, they're not what they say they are. They're not, they're not a Native American Indian. Good. We, we, you can have the Native American Indian terminology. You can have it. Because Native goes to slaves and servants, servants, and Indian goes to indigent, or whatever the case may be, so you can have that. What you cannot have is autochthonous Aboriginal American. That is my niggas. I'm sorry. Now, everybody else can say what they want to say. I'm saying what I'm going to say. And I'm basing that on extensive research. And I don't care what the, a bunch of Europeans or anybody, because you got people on the reservation saying that niggas are stealing people's identity. You got people in the UK, ain't even over here, saying niggas are stealing people's identity. You got people coming from south of the border who were transplanted from Spain into what you call now Mexico, saying niggas are always taking somebody else's identity. The last time I checked, all of you guys are taking somebody else's identity. You're in Egypt claiming to be the original Egyptians. You're in Zululand and South America, I mean South Africa, claiming to be the original South Africans, which really were Zulu warriors in South Africa. You're in America on the reservations claiming to be the original Americans. Even the, even the uh, Amish are like, well, no, nah, we, we were told it wasn't them people in, uh, on the reservations. We didn't know who it was, but we were told it wasn't them. So I'm saying to you guys as listeners, don't get back and forth into discussions with these people. Don't get into arguments with these people. Let them make their little jinky, janky, stanky comments because you cannot reason with them because they're going to say, where's your scholarship? What uh, uh, grave-robbing, cannibal-ass archaeologist verifies that? Well, they can't verify nothing for me. They're cannibals and grave robbers. What DNA evidence proves that? They can't prove nothing for me either because when they're done, they can say I'm from the moon if they want to. They control what they say, and they can't verify nothing from me. Now, when you find somebody that's telling the truth, uh, you know, then you can talk. Even Brother Horace Butler trying to get his little book out. Uh, what's his book called? Uh, 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 when Rocks Cry Out. Even he was trying to put forth the truth that he had found, and I'm hoping that he kept his originals and copies and whatever and gave these people copies. If you give them originals, they're going to bury niggas again, because, again, that was the Atlantean decision, to bury us in ancient Mu. The Lemurians is about burying them and lying on them. See, when you lie on a people and say that they're cannibals and say that they're savages and say that they're rapists and say that they're uh, murderers and child molesters, everything that these people have been proven, and if you've been listening to this show, I have proven to you who is who and who was doing what. They've come over here and they've traded places. They put all of their behave, bad behavior and the janky names for their behavior on our people and said it was us. And then took the, for lack of better words, honorable behavior and names of our people and claimed to be the people that they found here and then say the people that, that were found here were imported as slaves from Africa. Just don't get into arguments with people because you can't win. You can't win with somebody that has a point to make. And the point that they're trying to make is we're going to bury y'all. That's one of the reasons why they blew off the blew up, you know, uh, and, and blame the Taliban or Osama bin Laden or whoever for blowing the faces off of the twin Buddhas that UNESCO is supposed to be repairing. When they're done, they'll probably be blonde hair, blue eyed Buddhas. They'll probably look like Europeans when they're done. So they'll say, oh, these were the ancient ones. No, you're not the ancient ones. You're the newest ones. Like they say, a little child will lead them. This is not only a little child that's leading us, it's a misbehaved child at that. Anyway. Um, I'm saying all that to say people are lying on us. Like people say psychology today is supposed to be saying we're ugly, and someone was telling me that Brother Minister Farrakhan was saying that, you know, our nappy hair and everything is all messed up or whatever the case may be. I don't try to pick on other people's people. I do try to defend my people. And I'm going to say this. For all you Bible thumpers, did not the European come over here we had all the land, and they had the Holy Bible. And now today they have all the land, and we have the Holy Bible. Didn't they give us that Holy Bible and shove that down everybody's throat? And I'm saying, and as I said before, niggas don't know how to read very well. I think a lot of Europeans don't know how to read very well. And people read and 
see what they want to see and interpret what they want to interpret because they don't know words and they don't know read language and they don't comprehend that well. Well, everybody had better go back while they're calling melanin-rich people that have dark skin and nappy hair, while they're calling us and our skin ugly because it's dark or what's so-called dark and us and our hair ugly because it's black and, 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 and curly, they better get in that holy Bible and go to the book of Leviticus and read chapter 13, paragraph 24 through 32, where they say in no uncertain terms, people that have pale skin and pale patches of skin, out of which grows yellow hair, thin yellow hair, which we call straight blonde hair, that those people, or those type of people are not to be mated with their unclean until black hair starts growing out of that white skin. Somebody better go try to read this book that the Europeans shove down your throat that the Europeans don't want to know about. And either they don't know about it, don't want to know about it, or don't want you to know about it. And I'm saying, if you're listening to me, you're going to know, because I'm telling. And I don't know that much. I just know some stuff. So if pale skin and yellow hair is considered by in the Holy Bible itself to be lep leprous-like and unclean, then why is Hollywood always pushing this agenda that anybody that has uh, dark hair, no matter how white, so-called white your skin is, if your hair is dark, Hollywood tells you, oh, no, you, you look too ethnic. What they may as well say is, oh, you look too clean. We need, you to, we need you to have this pale skin and yellow hair. And I'm not beating up people that have pale skin and yellow hair because, like I said, one of my sisters is pale skin with blonde hair and light eyes. But I'm saying to, this to say, while everybody's trying to point the finger at us, I'm going to point it right back. And I don't get out trying to beat up anybody's people, but I'm not going to sit by and let people beat up mine. But I'm also not going to join YouTube or Facebook or anywhere else to get into long uh, uh, shouting matches on the Internet with other people that have janky things to say. Let them make their janky comments and act like their asses aren't there. Because for whatever reason, whenever we're doing anything and whenever we're talking, they're always there. You don't see our people trolling the Ku Klux Klan sites and the Ku Klux Klan tubes all day, and even if we're there, you don't see us making comments about what they say. Oh, you know, the Aryans were this and the white man is that. Niggas could care less because, again, what did I say we are? Right use of real people. Good. That's great that you feel good about your people, that you think you're beautiful. That's a wonderful thing. You do your own thing. I'm not bothering you. Don't bother me. Niggas drive one another crazy, but we're, for the most part, not bothering other people's people, and I'm digressing all day long. And I have to do that because so many people are on this whole, we have to prove, especially my brother. brother. The brother man is a very honorable man, in my opinion. We do have some straight-up assholes out there. But for the most part, he's a very honorable man. But he's become kind of crazy lately because, you know, our people have been so thoroughly damaged. I make allowances for the damage. But I also understand that Europeans have been so thoroughly damaged, so I make allowances for their damage. You know, and, and again, they could care less. I'm not trying to, I don't need, they don't need me to make allowances for them. They probably don't want me to make allowances for them. But I'm saying it now, and I've said it before. Anybody that's been browbeaten to no extent and been traumatized to no extent the way our people have been and the way the Europeans before they got to us with the shit had been by people that look just like them, it's a wonder that people that go through that would not become out serial killers. Like the little boy, the poor baby that was caught, found cut up in a freezer today. I submit to you that was probably a serial killer. But when you come from a culture that says in their holy books that it is okay and normal to have sex with children, that child pornography is normal, that it's normal to have sex with animals, and orgies with adults and animals and children. Children that are subjected to that from damn near the day they were born, if they live through it, it's not a wonder they're crazy as hell and run around serial killers and up to serial hatred. They hate themselves. And, you know, it, it causes you to be, like I've said before, one of multiple things. You're going to either be a cutter with some self-hatred issues and you're cutting yourself, or you're going to wind up being uh, – a serial molester yourself because you've been victimized, or you're going to wind up being a serial killer. Uh, you're going to wind up being uh, somebody that has some sort of eating disorder, um, or you're going to wind up uh, um, at the very. You're going to wind up with some bully issues and, and control freak issues, 
at best, at best, if you're lucky, you'll just wind up with some kind of anal behavior where you're perpetual neat freak, constant cleaning, and, you know, things just have to be just so. You know, you're going to wind up with some kind of issue. But melanin-rich people, when you consider what we've been through, it's an amazing, you know, Europeans are lucky that niggas are not serial killers, seriously. And I'm sure there has been one or two or three or a handful out there, but in comparison, not enough. But that's not our culture either. So um, getting into some of this stuff, because I'm getting kind of tired of people lying on us and blaming things on us that we didn't do and trading places with us and saying that we're trying to steal somebody else's identity when we're trying to take our back, because it took this long to start remembering, you know what I'm saying, why they obliterate history and reclassify us. And I said before, it's been done three primary ways. In America, it was first done by the Europeans who ran away from the colonies because of the horrible way they were being treated, the women and the children in particular ran away from the colonies to hang around in the communities that were the, uh, the uh, autochthonous Aboriginal American, the copper-colored races that were found here, because it was better. And when their European husbands or European fathers or whatever European families would come to get them, to get them away from us, these people had to be dragged away kicking and screaming most of the time. And sometimes they were literally hog-tied just to get them away from us. They'd be hanging on for dear life, grabbing on the ankles or, or around the legs of some melanin-rich somebody that they had, you know, attached to because being with us was better and cooler and, and safer in the whole night. And the first opportunity those people got when they were taken back home, the first chance they got when nobody was looking, they ran away again and ran back amongst our people again. And yet they call us cannibals and savages. Excuse you, hold up, what? They lost these people by the hundreds of thousands. They lost so many Europeans amongst our people that they had to start passing laws against Indianization because too many so-called Europeans were becoming too much like what they call Indians. But in the, in the United in Americas, niggas, the Americans have been Africanized and the Europeans have been Americanized and everybody's got somebody else's identity. Okay? Now, and, and if you do the research, you will find that. They used to call our people, little brown bits and little chocolate drops and all this kind of shit. That's not what you're going to call the people you see on the reservations today, some of whom still are part them and part us, and some of them are just straight up European, that's it and that's all. But uh, that was the first way. A lot of them got, onto the, the, got around us from, for running amongst us. And some of them appreciated and some of them got there and turned on us. You know, you got to go back into that damn John Ross and these crap, this, this crap. You got the Europeans sitting up as king of the niggas and chief over the Indians and whatever, and you're a European, straight up European. And you're dictating to the people that you came and found here and conquered here, most of whom were children because you killed off most of the adults or shipped them somewhere else kind of thing so you could control the women and the children, but mostly the children because children are what they're into. The second thing was that goddamn Walter Ashby Plecker, and his reclassification of the Americans that still look like copper-colored Americans, he, he, he rewrote them in the documentation in the uh, Bureau of Vital Statistics, in Virginia's Bureau of Vital Statistics, which he was the head of, and he was a bona fide racist. He started rewriting the American identities on the marriage records, the birth records, and the death records as Negro. And if you came in there and you were so-called European or you still had European features, then those people, they were classified as Indians. People that still had American nigger features, they were classified Negro. Then they put the icing on the case in the 1930 census. Anybody that was part so-called European and part so-called Indian, on the 1930 census, they were identified and classified as Indian. Anybody that was so-called Indian and so-called black, which by that they mean you were an, you were an American so-called uh, uh, aborigine that still looked like a nigga, you were identified as Negro. Niggas went from being American and then Indian to Negro, to color, not, and, you know, to black, to black American, to Afro-American, to African-American. And now the people that came from Europe to here are considered the Native Americans, and the people that were found here are considered imported descendants, um, I mean, the descendants of imported Africans. 
So they've made us a foreigner.